All right, welcome back. So what I'm gonna do now is show you how to start work on MP1. So every MP checkpoint, what we do is we distribute a new test suite. And then you spend time and we guide you through the process of completing the coding that you need to do to complete the test suite so that all the test suites pass. Every test suite has about four tests and we'll have four lessons where we walk you through some of the code that you need to understand uh, and modify in order to pass that particular test suite. Okay, so uh, we're gonna walk through this a little bit carefully since it's your first time uh, acquiring these new test suites and integrating them to the project, right? So there's, there's two steps here, right? Uh, the first step is I need to download the test suites themselves. So I'm gonna go to the website and I'm gonna download this file called mp1test.kt. This is Kotlin code. The next thing I need to do is I need to put it in the right spot in my project. So I'm in my uh, code that I'm using to work on the MP alongside everybody else. Um, and I've got, so what I'm gonna do, I'm in the, the project view like I normally am, and I'm gonna open up app source test Kotlin. And you'll see what I wanna do is I wanna put it in this folder right next to MP0 test. That's, that's where it belongs. Now, depending on what type of computer you're using, you might have different uh, methods for uh, for moving files around. Um, my dog is trying to pull a toy out the side of her crate, which is probably not going to work. Um, but anyway, hopefully she won't get too frustrated. So I'm going to go to my downloads over here. I see mp1test.kt uh, and I'm just going to drag it over here um, and it's going to say, do I want to move it there? You can leave, if search for references is checked, I would uncheck that. I'm just going to hit refactor. Uh, oh, it got angry with me about something. So, okay, sorry, I, I didn't manage to do that properly. Let's try again. Um, so I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna put it uh, right, well, let's see, try this one more time. I told you this might be the hardest hardest part of this. Okay, I'm gonna drag it over here. Um, the file does not belong to the project. Uh, I wanna edit the file anyway, uh, I guess. Okay, I guess that's okay. This is weird. This didn't, this didn't do this quite the same way. Uh, okay, let's try this. Let's see what happens. Uh, okay, good. So that worked. It's a little bit different when I did for Java. What is happening? So, all right. Now, this is an important moment. So, um, when you work with the Git version control system, when you add files to your project, there's a separate step that you have to perform to tell Git that you want it to pay attention to that file and record changes to it. This is known as adding the file to the project. Android Studio is smart enough to say, oh wait, there's a new file here, do you wanna add it to Git? And the right thing to do here is to click add, okay? Um, now let's say that you forgot or something and you hit cancel, uh, you'll see in my uh, Android Studio that mp1test.kt is red, and this is because it's not being tracked. This color indicates that it's not being tracked by Git. So I do have some more to do in this file, but before I do that, I wanna add it to my uh, project. And to do that later, I can just go over here, right click, hit Git, and then add, okay? And now you'll see um, it's green, which means it's a new file that's gonna be included in the next commit. It also has a red underline indicating that there are problems. So we're about to, to solve those problems. Okay, so I've got uh, mp1test.kt open. Now, when we give you new test suites, this is typically part of the process because what happens is those test suites expect that you've done certain things, that you've written certain pieces of code that you probably haven't written yet. Um, and so there's missing parts of your, um, of your uh, app that we are testing. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some stubs. We're just gonna put in code that will allow the test suites to compile, but not solve the problem, right? And there's only a few small bits of this to do for this particular uh, assignment. Okay, so let's scroll through here. Now, this is uh, one of the, the problems, right? Which is that there's this uh, search method. Now, this is something we're gonna come back and talk about later. But you might be wondering, this is sort of weird, right? Because if you, if you go through the code, and this is as usual, very well commented, hey, I'm in the middle of something. I'll play with you in a minute. Um, if you go through the code, what you'll find is that um, this looks like it's a method on a list of restaurants. So restaurants at this point in the test contains a list of restaurants that we're, we're searching for. So you might be wondering like, how do I add a method to a list? And so the way we do that is by using something called a um, extension method. And this is a really cool feature of Kotlin. What I'm gonna do is show you how to write that method and, and <laughs> where to put it. Um, so if, you, if I go up here and look at the imports, 
you'll look that it, it's expecting that to be in the models um, the models file. So I'm going to over here. I'm going to open up main Kotlin models. Go to models.kt, and down here I'm going to write this method. Now here's the signature of it. This is new. We don't expect you to understand this. We will talk about it more when we work on this method together, which we're going to do in the next lesson. Um, so let's write, but let's just write this out for now. Okay, so I'm going to write, um, now the, the syntax looks a little bit different than we're used to. So what I do is I say list restaurant dot search, and then this is going to take uh, a, I'll call this input, which is a string. And for now, I'm just going to do what's called, uh, I'll return this, and this is going to return a list of restaurants. So the idea is we'll work on this method together and we'll talk about this syntax when we get there. But this is going to be used by our app to, when the user searches for something in the UI, we're going to use this method to determine which restaurant should be shown. Pretty, pretty cool. This is, again, something called an extension method in Kotlin. So I don't want to go into this in too much detail because really what we're doing is just getting the test suites to compile. But what this allows you to do is to create methods that look like they are attached to an instance of an object or a class that you don't control. So we're not actually changing the code for Kotlin lists. We're writing an extension method for a particular type of list. We'll talk about this more uh, when we get there. Once you add that to models.kt, you'll see that that angry uh, bit goes away. And there's one other thing I need to change here. Um, and a lot of times the test suite problems will give you hints at some of the work that we're going to do as we work on uh, the, tests, uh, the, the tests together and as we work on the MP checkpoint. So the other thing is that it looks like at this point, restaurant is supposed to have a cuisine property. Now, if I go over here and I look at my restaurant uh, class, right now all it has is a name property. We're going to talk more about the data that we use, that we provide for your app to work. Um, but it turns out that in the data that we provide, not only do we provide the name, but we also provide a cuisine value as well, as well as some other information. Um, so I'm going to add this to my primary constructor. So I'm going to add a, a field called cuisine that's also going to be a name. Now, next thing you're going to see is that my secondary constructor is now broken because my secondary constructor assumes that the primary constructor only has one string field. And so the way I can fix this is just by adding a second empty string. Now you might be wondering what this is here for, and honestly I should have had a comment here, so I'll put one now. Um, um, this is required for Jackson deserialization library to work. What does that mean? We'll talk about it more later, but you need this empty constructor. So in order, we're going to use a library that allows us to take data and convert it into restaurant objects. But for that library to work, it needs an empty constructor. And all that empty constructor should do is just set, in this case, the fields to blank values. Okay, so we made those other small changes, and now we'll see that that error is gone, and at this point, we should be done with the changes needed to start uh, grading MP1. However, if I go and run the grade task again, um, what we're gonna see is that it's going to run and run and, and run for a minute, and then what's going to happen is it's going to show me my score for MP0. It's still grading MP0. Um, now, it's good to run this when you're getting started with the new checkpoint on the old checkpoint just to make sure that the changes you made didn't cause anything else to break, right? Like, we're not expecting something else to go wrong. My score on MP0 shouldn't go down. I should still have 100. Um, but, you know, let's make sure that that happened, right? Uh, so I'm running this, and it's going to run the test, and eventually it's going to spit out. Um, I'm expecting that I still have full credit on MP0. So how do you tell the grade task to grade MP1? To do this, we want to go over here into our uh, sidebar and we're going to open up uh, the grade.yaml file. And now what I do is this is what, how you tell um, our system which checkpoint to grade. Now if you forget to do this and you submit code, hey, let's play with this in about two minutes. And if you submit code that has the wrong checkpoint, what will happen is you'll be submitting code for an older checkpoint. So you want to change this when you start working on each new part of the MP. So I've set this to 1. Now I'm going to rerun my grader. This is going to think for a little while, and it's going to run the test feeds. And you're going to see failures, because we haven't actually done any of the work for this um, MP checkpoint yet. Um, but you'll see that I'm going to get zeros on the four MP checkpoints. I should get 10 points for not having any problems for, for, with detect. Right, which looks at my code and, and analyzes it for common mistakes. Um, so I should have those 10 points. And that also means that this is a good time to commit my work 
as I'm getting started, right? I'll just commit, I'm not going to commit and push. I'm just going to commit. Okay, so I see that there was a failure and now I look at the score tab and I have 10. So again, great time to, to write a commit, right? Um, I'll say something like installed MP1 test suites and configured for creating MP1. Okay, and I'll hit commit. And you'll see in the commit dialog here the changes that I've made. So I modified grade.yaml, I changed the checkpoint from zero to one. I made some modifications to my models file, I added a comment there, and then I added this extension method. And then I also installed MP1 test. And here there's no side by side because this file didn't exist before. So essentially the dialog is just showing me it's all new. Um, okay, cool, I'll hit commit. And, oh yeah, we can just uh, hit commit anyway. This is gonna come up every time, I'm sorry. I don't know, I'll try to figure out some way to make that get away. Maybe we'll just install that um, library that it wants us to use, but anyway, okay. So, so we're done, we're good. And now we are ready to start work on the actual code that we need to write to earn a perfect score on MP1.